Hey everyone, welcome back to our second video in the Boson NetSim 9 demo video series. In our first video, we took a look at Boson NetSim. We had a walk around the user interface so that we could sort of learn to find our way around and what's where. And in this video, what I'd like for us to do is to actually get into the configuration of the lab steps and walk through and see if we can accomplish the objectives of the lab. Now once again this is the first demo lab right up here at the top. You'll recall that to load the lab into the simulator in our last video we just gave it a double click and it loaded into the simulator. The areas of interest on the screen that we talked about were the lab documentation up here at the top and the console window down below. Now I also mentioned that we can maximize our use of multiple monitors or a large monitor by pulling the lab document out of the NetSim main window so that we can drag it over to another monitor and we can do the same thing with our net map which is the graphical representation of the simulated network topology. Now we can do that a couple of different ways. You can go up under the main menu and you can make the menu choice to launch the external lab viewer. You can also use the control L shortcut key, control M or this other menu option to launch the net map viewer in an external window or if you look closely there is a launch icon in each one of the tabs that will allow allow you to launch the lab documentation into an external viewer with just a single click as you can see. And I could do the same thing with the NetMap viewer. I've got the same little hotspot on the tab that I can click and that will launch the NetMap viewer into its external window which I can resize and then I can move these about my screen space over to an external monitor if I wish so that I can maximize my use of a large monitor or multiple monitors by separating NetSim into three component parts. So let's take a look at the lab document. This is the demo lab and the objective of this lab is to be able to enable communication to occur from the PC workstations in network A over here on the left with network B over on the right. Now let me go ahead and let you know that when this lab loads, the loading configuration of this lab already has a complete configuration for router B, the same for switch A and switch B, and all of the PC workstations. So everything is configured already except for router A. So all of the work that we're going to be doing is going to be on router A. So this is the only device that we'll need to be able to work with in order to meet the configuration objective of the lab. And that objective is to be able to go to the console of PC1 and issue a ping. And a ping is just a layer 3 connectivity test to verify that we can send traffic to a, a remote IP address somewhere else on the network and get a reply back. So we want to be able to do that and be able to verify our connectivity with these other PC workstations over in network work B which we reach by going across the WAN link that links the two routers. I've scrolled a little further through the document and you can see the command summary table. This lists all of the commands that we're going to need to be able to use in order to meet the configuration objectives of this lab. It's really important information here the IP addresses for each interface of each device that we'll need to be aware of. Now as I mentioned before router B already has these IP addresses on its serial 00 and fast ethernet 00 interface so we need to know what that is but we don't have to go make that configuration ourselves. The same thing for the PC workstations. They already have their IP address and subnet masks and default gateways already configured. While we're here it's worthwhile to note and I'll put the the net map up here as well so that you can kind of see them both. Everything on the left side in network A is going to be in the 192.168.100 network. That's everything on the on the LAN side of network A. These PC workstations are going to both be in the 192.168.100 network and the LAN interface on router A that's fast ethernet 00. It's going to be in the 192.168.100 network as well. So the the, um, the fast ethernet interface on router A will be dot one, dot two will be the first PC and dot three will be the second PC and we can verify that by looking in the table. And the same scenario plays out over in network B on the right half of our topology. The fast ethernet 00 interface on router B that's going to be dot one. The first PC will be dot two and the second PC will be dot three. But these will all be in the 192.168.200 network. So you want to familiarize yourself with these IP addresses because later we're going to be going to PC1 and issue various pings to troubleshoot our way through to the complete configuration of this lab. So before we get too far into the configuration of our network topology here, let's get the 
console tabs arranged so that we have access to the devices that we need. So let me go ahead and pull the net map back over and remind you that we'll be working primarily on router A. We may want to have a look at the configuration of router B. We will need to do some troubleshooting steps from the console of PC1. So we'll at least need those console windows open. So let's go ahead and get them open. I'm going to go to router B in the net map. I'll right click and choose to configure in simulator. And I'll also want a command prompt for PC1 and I'll right click on it and choose configure in simulator. So now I have all of the tabs that I'll need. There's router A. You can see that it is in its default configuration. It doesn't even have a host name. It is just as if we had powered up a router with no configuration and in fact we have. Router A has booted up, simulated router A has booted up with no startup configuration. Router B, we can see, already has a host name set. And if we looked further, if we looked into the running configuration of Router B, we would see that IP addresses are already there and some other things have already been done. So we don't have to concern ourselves with the configuration of Router B unless we need to just come over here and look at something. And here we have the command prompt for PC1, which is where we'll begin to do our troubleshooting steps and our activity verification steps. So let's get started working on router A to make the configuration changes that we need. Now the very first thing that I'm going to do is to set a proper host name on router A. I can see that this is the console tab for router A, but let's make sure that we have a host name configured on router A. And in order to be able to do that, we need to get into privileged exec mode. We know that right now we're in user exec mode. How do we know that? Well, we can look at the command prompt and see. And if we were to try to make any configuration commands now, we would be not denied the ability to do that. So I'll use the enable command to elevate my privileges to the privileged exec mode. Now there is no enable secret or enable password configured, so there's no security challenge. Certainly in a production environment, we would want that to be the case, but in this demo lab, we just issue the enable command and we go straight into privileged exec mode where we could begin to do some configuration. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to go into global configuration mode. And when you do that in the demo version of NetSim, you'll be reminded that this is an evaluation version and you're going to be limited to a subset of the commands that you would have as compared to a fully activated version of NetSim. So we'll be reminded of that as a result of the message that we see. So let's do host name, router A, and we've got that step completed. Now the next thing that we need to do is to configure the WAN link between router A and router B. That's the first thing that we want to do is to see if we can establish connectivity between router A and router B and from the console of router A, see if we can ping the interface on the other end of this serial link on router B. So let's give that a try. Referring back to the lab document, we were reminded that there are a couple of interfaces on router A that we need to put IP addresses on and make sure that they are up and able to move traffic. So the first thing that I like to do is to use the show IP interface brief command. Notice that I'm using command shortcuts. I could type it out in its entirety if I wanted to. And I can see that none of the interfaces that I have have an IP address assigned. They are all in shutdown mode. So the first thing that we're going to do is to go to serial 00, which is this interface right here that faces router B across the WAN link. So I've used the interface configuration command to get into interface configuration mode for serial 00. And I'm going to apply an IP address of 10.1.1.5. How did I know that? Well, I looked at the IP address table from the lab document to find that out. And also we're going to need to apply a subnet net mask of 255.255.255.252. .255 Why do we do that? Well, this is a 30-bit mask. If we count it off the bits there, we can see that the first three octets are all set to 1, and the last one is set to 252. So we've got the first six bits of that last octet set to one as well. So that's going to be a slash 30. And if you'll recall from any subnetting exercises that you've done, a slash 30 works very well for a point to point link because we only have two host IP addresses and that's all we need, one for either end of the point to point link. The lab document also reminds us that serial 00 on router A is the DCE end of the serial link. And we have to apply clocking 
linking on the DCE end of the serial link before the link will come up. So we're going to use the clock rate command. We'll set this up as a 64 kilobit per second link and we enter that as 64000. And recall that this interface was initially in an administratively down state so we're going to do a no shutdown to bring the interface up. And we should see a console message that lets us see that the interface is in fact up. Let's do another show IP interface brief and we can review the fact that we do have the right IP address configured. The status of the interface is up and up. So let's try a test ping. What are we going to ping? Well, if we look at the configuration information in the lab document, we can see that serial 00 on router B has an IP address of 10116. We're on router A with an IP address of 10115, so we need to see if we can ping 10116. And we can. Our configuration is good so far. We've received five successful replies to the five ping packets that we sent over to the serial interface on router B. So we are so far so good. Let's continue with our interface configuration on router A. We just completed task one, which was to configure the serial 00 interface on router A. Let's move down to task two, which instructs us to configure the fast ethernet 00 interface on router A, which faces the local area network side of network A. So we can see that the IP address that we should configure there is 192.168.100.1 with a subnet mask of 255.255.255.0, or we could say with a 24-bit mask, 8 bits in the first octet, 8 bits in the second octet, and 8 bits in the third octet for a 24-bit mask. So let's go ahead and get that done. We're going to go back into global config. From there, we're going to go into interface configuration mode for fast ethernet 00, and we're going to apply the IP address of 192.168.100.1 with a mask of 255.255.255.0. And remember also that this interface was initially in an administratively down state, so we'll need to do a no shutdown to bring that interface up. So let's do a show IP interface brief to review our work. And we can see that we now have serial 00 configured correctly. We've already tested that. We know that one's good. And now we can see that we've got fast ethernet 00 on router A configured correctly with the IP address that we're supposed to have there. And the interface is in fact up and up. I'm gonna bring this video to a close and then we'll come back in our next video and verify that our fast ethernet 00 is configured correctly on router A. And then we'll start to do some verification steps to see how we're doing so far toward achieving the objectives of this lab. So thanks for viewing and be sure and check us out for more information about NetSim as well as our practice exams and courseware products on the web at bosun.com.